What's up YouTube, my name is Jason and this is my take. And I'm back again with another video. And today we're gonna do an end of month wrap up, do some quick album reviews of some albums I didn't really get to do full reviews of for the month of November, but still listen to and still wanted to give my thoughts on. I have seven albums for this video, so let's just jump right into it. The first album I wanna talk about is this new JPEG Mafia album, LP. Now, for those who don't know, I am a big JPEG Mafia fan. I like I love this dude so much. And once again, he came through with another great project. Coming off of Veteran and All My Heroes Are Cornballs, I was excited to see what JPEG was going to do next. Now, I want to recommend this album to you guys, but at the same time, maybe I shouldn't because JPEG Mafia isn't for everyone. While his lyrics are, are very deep, like he... It's great with his bars and he can get very political. It's the production side of things that make him a little different. Um, it's not for everybody. It can be a little tough on the ears and a little weird. But if you're into more experimental hip hop um, that, that has a lot of substance, I would highly recommend you guys check JPEG Mafia out. He's, in my opinion, one of the best artists in the underground scene right now. Next, I want to discuss the new Planet Asia album, Rule of Thirds. Now... This is actually my introduction to Planet Asia, who's been around for a while. But what got me interested in this project specifically is Evidence, who's um, an artist that I really enjoy. He actually produced this entire album. And I, I know him more as a rapper, but I know he's a producer. But I didn't know that he was making whole albums for other artists. So I was excited to see what I was getting myself into. And this was OK, honestly. Um, it had that dusty boom bap feel that I thought it would, knowing that evidence was behind the production. And some really cool moments from Planet Asia, but overall it was, it was it had more boring moments on it as well. I wasn't too moved. And I can't really say that I will return to this, but I am excited to see if this is a route that evidence is gonna take, you know, giving or providing full length albums and beats to other artists. So I think that'd be really exciting to see. Next, I want to discuss the new Ransom and Rome Streets album, Coupe de Grace. And man, this is a very dope project. I've already been familiar with Ransom and the Seven project that he dropped earlier this year that was really dope. And I've heard Rome Streets on a few Griselda records. I think he was on the last West Side Gun album. But together, these guys make a great pair. Rome Streets has more of a, a lighter or higher pitched energetic type voice and ransom is like the complete opposite more gruff tough and, and a deeper voice but it's very lyrical and very witty and I, I was i was really impressed ransom honestly was more of the standout for me he has so many different clever bars he has so much confidence in his raps and you know like it, it's making me become more of a fan of him and wanting to dig deeper into his discography next we have the new megan the stallion project something for the hotties which is a compilation of some songs that Meg just had sitting in the archives that she just wanted to release. And it was just nice to hear from Meg again. I'm a big Meg The Stallion fan, and I like these collection of tracks. Um, it wasn't anything that really blew me away overall. Like, I didn't get, you know, Tina Snow or Fever level, but th this was cool. And honestly, at this point, I'm just excited to see um, what, what our next full length album is going to be. You know, I've been seeing stuff about maybe a Tina Snow 2, which I personally would be ready for it. That's my favorite Meg project. So um, I'm curious to see what that'll be. Next is the new Winnie and Christo EP, Do My Own Stunts. Now, a couple years ago, my older sister actually put me on to Winnie and I stumbled upon her 2019 album, If I May, which really showed off her lyricism and her cadence, honestly. And this new EP um, wasn't on that level, in my opinion, but it was fine. Her lyrical and her vocal presence was still there on this EP. But ultimately, I still feel like there was a lot to, to be desired. This thing was short, um, but I feel like I still wanted a little more from both the uh, rapping perspective and production. Like, th like this thing was just, it was just solid. It was, it was fine. But this doesn't change anything uh, for me when it comes to Winnie. I'm still going to check out whatever she puts out moving forward and um, I'm, I'm always going to be curious to see what she's working on. Next is this new French Montana album. They got Amnesia and nah, this one wasn't for me, honestly. And I'll say that my issue with this album is probably my issue with 
DJ Khaled's last album or DJ Khaled's last couple of albums. Like to me, French Montana is a curator. Like he can get the big artists on, on tracks for a full length album, but that doesn't mean that the songs are just gonna be good because he has these popular artists on it. And it doesn't mean that it makes for a cohesive project because it did not with this one. It honestly just sounds like a typical mainstream hip hop radio station with no commercials. And it was just boring overall and when it comes to French Montana from a rapping perspective to it, I've just never been a fan of him as a rapper. He doesn't really do much for me. And while there were a, a cool couple of tracks here and there, like just out of 21, it wasn't a high percentage. And the final album on this list is the new Ken the Man album, What's My Name? And I am now a Ken the Man fan. I heard a, a couple of tracks before I dived into this and I, I did like her. Um, So I was curious to see what an album would sound like. And she just has so much swag and so much confidence and it's infectious. Like it, I, I wanted more after these 10 tracks. She commands every song that she's on and I don't question anything that she says. The production on this project is simple, but the energy and the cadence that Ken brings really shows why simplicity is always the way to go. She doesn't need much going on from a production standpoint. She works with what she has and she makes great songs out of it. So I would highly recommend you guys check out Ken the Man if you're into like Meg or if you're into Flo Millie, like you would really enjoy this project. So guys, that was my wrap up for November. What'd you guys think of these albums? There's some albums that I didn't mention that dropped in November that you guys really enjoyed. Drop them down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Jason's Take this week. Next week, I'll probably be doing two videos as well. Might do three. I know Brent is dropping next week, so I'll definitely be doing that, but focusing on these end of year lists and they're going to take a little while. So I want to hone in on those uh, to end off the year. But guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. Come back and watch for more. I'm Jason. This has been my take. And I'll see you next time.